What's up, everyone? Uh, welcome to a new series that I'm creating. This one is for 10Q to 5Q, but I guess you can go back from 5Q to whatever, um, all the way back. So this one, I'm going to try to stay pretty basic uh, knowledge. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and go over the series of about 20 games played by this player called Jthat. So Black, we're looking at Black's game here. And so uh, I think Black is 7Q. As it says right here, I think KGS, I'm not sure. So Black starts out with a 4-4, then White starts with a 4-4 on the bottom right, which is um, a little different. Usually you want to go to uh, the opposite corner. That's just etiquette, but you can start here too. Um, the only problem with going here is black can choose to split white like that and play the opposite corners. Or you can play, you know, this, which is, then it becomes normal. So this game becomes normal, and then black chooses um, this formation is known as the Chinese opening. Uh, it's very famous and very strong. And as you can see here, the next move that white plays um, is not good versus the Chinese opening because basically the Chinese opening, the idea behind that is uh, to play this formation and invite white to come in like so and then um, you can attack and as you can see because of this stone here white doesn't have enough room for eyes see so you attack and then you generate profit so basically that's the basic idea of the Chinese opening so if you're gonna play the Chinese opening you gotta know the main idea behind it and if you don't use it to attack and profit then you're using the stone wrong and because of that, your stone's not going to be as efficient. So here, let's see what black does. Seems like black pull back here, which is very passive, which is counter. Um, is this counter with the other stone, the with other working stone? So here, um, I kind of don't like this move um, because you're not really forcing white you're not attacking white as much. So here, white slides in, and then blacks uh, back off and play here. Which right now, if you're black, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to toggle this coordinates on. So if you're black here, um, right now your stones are not working very well together, okay? So this stone is supposed to generate attack but then you let white settle pretty easily, and then you're going somewhere else. So your your stones are not working together, or is it a cohesive opening for black? That's what I see right here, and the major problem with this game. So I think I guess like at this level, at the the you know the double digit Q to five Q level, I think it's important to be able to get your stone to work together and you're opening to work together and stay on the same theme, you know? Like, if you're going to play Chinese opening, then you need to use that to attack. And uh, the reason why I think this series is going to be good because uh, Jthat uh, at 7Q played a lot of games with the same opening, with the Chinese opening. And then so you can see the, uh, the differences when we go over the game. So let's see after this. The exchange here are pretty basic. I kind of don't like these exchange yet. Um, usually you want to save those, so just go ahead if you want to play that, play that here. Because this later will be, uh, you want to leave it. So this is end game exchanges that happens here. And usually you want to save that because you never know what later on what you might need and might not need. So. You have definitely don't want to f settle this whole area. So this area is settled all the way to this move. This is like end game. We're we're still in the opening here, okay? So 
instead of that, you can play something else. But it since white reply, so it's okay. So anyway, after this, black sh plays the shoulder hit. And then black, white crawls. And then black plays this. Okay, here, I don't like this combination because as you can see, if, if white pushed through here, white is subtle here, right? This group is pretty much alive. And now this becomes a string of stone between two strong white group, which is a never a good thing. Because even if black start running, white can be able to start getting profit here, right? So I don't like the shoulder hit so much. So you got to ask um, when you play the shoulder hit move like this, what are you trying to accomplish here with this move? Like what, what am I trying to accomplish? So what exactly is Black trying to accomplish here? Maybe um, develop the center. That's what it looks like. Uh, even here. So I mean, here the center is developed pretty well. Ex the only thing is this group is mm, kind of weak. So if I was Black, actually, instead of that, I would play this. Looks kind of slow, but um, if you want to develop the center with the stone, this move is huge because now this whole thing is black center, right? So now white access to this center would be like around here only because of this stone also. So moves like this, it sometimes looks slow, but it corrects black shape and is really strong, right? This is the opposite of a empty triangle, right? So, um... To be able to find move like this, sometimes you gotta pull back and, you know, correct your shape and stuff like that. Um, that is needed. So, but black plays here, and so far nothing too glaring with the opening, except for this, right? Because black did not pursue white like it was a uh, Chinese opening. So you gotta have a conflict of interest here, a conflict of what black wants in the opening. But nothing too glaring. It's not like Black lost the game or anything like that. Nah, I would say right now, even. I would prefer Black position here be because of this development out here. This could end up being a lot of points. And this corner is still open for the 3-3. So um, that's an interesting move. Um, I wonder what Black White will do if Black did that. It would be hard to live, I tell you that. Um, but that's a lot of reading, so I'm not going to go over that. Just looking over over overall picture here, the macro picture. So black played this. That's safe move. And then white slides. And which white is still not alive yet, you know. You can always play stuff like this. And if black, if white does that, you take the corner for later on, right? But if white does something like this, then uh, this corner might be dead, you know? So, mm, it's tough to say. But uh, this corner is small for now. So as black, black want to approach here. I would attack with the 3-3 three, three to get Sente. And then like, let's say if white did that, something like this. Right, so now and then you can shoulder hit here, at, and keep white pretty low. Right, um, the reason why people hit the three three is because the three three whoever invades gets sente and then keeps going again. But here black approaches here, and now goes in the center. Okay, this this is a shape move. Um, Josuke, Josuke, you have to play like this. Okay. You just gotta know Joski, and the reason why Black plays the descending move like this at Joski is because when Black plays this, there's this cut here, and it's pretty bad because now that corner is white, right? I mean, Black traded the side, which is okay, but um, the reason why Black doesn't do this push is because of this cut. The reason why you play the descent is because now the cut's not there. You see? The see the reason behind those moves. 
and so the and then white backs off here. That's Josuke. And then now you still have Sente, and you can still reduce white here. So the white's ter uh, territory is manageable. It's not getting out of hand or anything like that. Remember, there's always this shoulder hit. So after this, uh, the cut happens, and um. Black plays this. Now remember, um, this shape right here has a weakness. This tr uh, trade right here, the reason why this trade is okay for black is because white does have a weakness for later. Uh, you can see here, um, if black can play right here and, and white would have to respawn. So this is a free move for black all the time. Because if black doesn't respawn, I'll show you um, why. Let's say black, uh, white plays something right here, right? Then now this thing is uh, sente because pushing this way now works for black. And now this group is captured, see? And if white pushes this way, then these two stone are still captured. So that's why this move is free, and then uh, the outside shape of black is not too bad. So this. This for this reason, uh, I think the position is fine. Overall, though, I think I like Black's position better because if you look at the board here, White is fairly low to the board everywhere, very low. Like how many move on the second line? One move, two move, three move, four move, four move on the second line. Pretty bad. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, you can see here Black. If black settle this group, black is leading by a lot because the center game here is all black. And not only that, later on, black has a lot of move to force white on the low on the um, second line and just profit from the outside. So here, I think black is doing a good job. There are some mistakes, as I pointed out at the beginning, but at this level, black is doing a lot better than white right now. The shoulder hit is good. And then uh, here, though, Black did make a mistake because being too aggressive here is not good. And then here, Black gets uh, overextended here. But still here, Black is still okay. If you did your reading here, push here, um, I would have done here. And then something like that. And then white is capture, okay? Uh, but the way black play was okay also. So here, um, this is huge. This is huge. So black here leads by 30 or 40 by now. And so now just an invasion here is uh, going to end the game, which is a good idea. I do like that idea for... Uh, for black and black also has so much control on the corner uh, on the center so pretty much this game black should have won okay but I don't think black win because black made some mistakes and so um, here though instead of invading first I would have done this this is directional play because this group is captured so this is like super strong here so now you can push white towards the center and then in the center is all black, right? So if white does choose to run this group out, this is gonna be in huge trouble. This is gonna favor black here, this fight. But, uh, so now uh, white get that, but still not bad. So as I say before, this group over here was kinda weak. And so what you wanna do is actually not just you don't have to save this group, right? You capture this group, so you can sacrifice this group and still win. If you do board analysis, you see where is white's points. I mean, white has like 2-3 here, 2-3 here, 2-3 here. So let's say 15 overall, and then like 20 over here. Like 30-something points, 40-something points, right? And this right here is by, by itself is like 20-30 already, and then this is like 15. Black just has a lot of points, so you can sacrifice this, right? So advanced player would 
just sacrifice this and maybe if something had like this then black would just play something like this it's fine we'll trade that and then take the points on the side remember you don't have to win every point to win the game you just have to get enough more than your opponent and here so uh black kind of broke down here with this um, trying to see here. Actually, you should have done this, and then that. This would um, allow you to play. So if white play this, then you can play this. See, and then uh, this group is alive because it will capture. It will capture this stone. Do, 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 do. You can play this. I think this move works right here. Um, I don't think that there's any way for white to... Escape here. Yeah. So it's going to be hard for white here. Uh, the reading is a little tough, but it's fine here like this. He made a mistake, but even here you can sacrifice this group also. It's just the, the cut was uh, a little bit more crucial. And if you wanted to live here, I think uh, this was probably better because if he does this right so he has to play one move to poke the eye out then after you do this you can clamp here and the only way for white to respond is here and then after that you're gonna win the semi this group is, doesn't have enough liberty like this one because this one has the uh, corner too and it has to capture then have to uh, uh no uh, white has to capture then white has to connect then poke in, then poke in. So um, black would win this semi right here. Uh, so I would play that first. But black play here, and then uh, it got poked. Even here, it still works. If you cut here, then you play this. It is very hard for white to do anything. Right? Do you guys see that? If white does that, you do that. And then white has to connect. If white does that, then you can just Atari and capture that. But if white connects, which is the only thing white can do in this case, then you can just ladder this down. And then now this group is dead because I versus no I. So, um, that's one mistake. But then like, uh, black play here, which is okay. Okay, so now this group equals this group, right? And black has this for that. And then so the game is close now. Actually, here you can play this move. Remember, because of this weakness right here, so this move is actually pretty good to cut off these two stones here. But this is okay too. And then, now, you should really play this first. That's Sente, make white connects at least. You know, and then you can play something like this, or even something like this. See, white has to go, and then now, the outside is good. So if you have, this is why, um, another reason concept why you don't want to play on the second line is because your opponent can hit you on a shoulder hit on the second line, threaten to block you off, and then now you're crawling on the second line, which is very bad, as you know. Um, at any level, crawling on the second line like this is very, very bad. So that's basically the concept of the first game um, that I see. 
black actually had a winning position but a lot of mistake I guess um, caused black to lose so you got sometimes you gotta slow down and protect your stones and protect your groups if you know you're ahead by a lot it's nothing wrong with that those moves are called Hante uh, Hante is like slow looking move but it actually strengthen your group a lot and then you can use those groups to attack later um, to apply more pressure so and this game we see that uh, Jthat here uh, used the Chinese opening incorrectly so now let's go to look at in the next game which um, is another Chinese opening so by the way this I told um, I told this person to send me the game that they lost because um, I think that's what I told them but so far the first five games that I look at um, it is a loss but uh, a loss you can learn a lot more than a win usually so actually when you lose that's when you improve if you go back to the game and then when you win it it helps you with the points but it knowledge why it doesn't help that much so let's go to game two here so we see Jay that play against four and this time uh, this white person played the correct move here so make sure black cannot cut you if that's what black wants right so essentially if it reverses back to the same thing it revert but you don't want to give black the option to cut or not cut you know so less option for black the better and here we see the shape again it is in a different orientation but it's nevertheless that is a Chinese opening and Chinese opening you do not want to jump in here or here or anywhere like that because you'll get attacked and then what black will build a moyo from that so here we see white place correct approach here um, you can also approach here here and here and here my favorite is a uh, usually I play usually I will play a and if black does something like this then I will pull back like this this is very light for white and reducing black's potential in the center and developing white's potential in the center also but here you can also approach up top too which is fine black pulls back and develops um, the moyo a little bit with the stone the stones here is strong with the shape and here um, this is a little weird the small knight uh, I'm not sure what white is going for but I guess at this level um, you you can expect anything that's not a good move by the way and so here I like this kick by Jay that because you know when you play close to your stone uh, when they, your opponent has close stones like this it's good to kick because they're already strong so kicking doesn't strengthen them but it does strengthen your corner so if black do something like that then you know this trait this looks bad for white but this looks good for for black so I like the kick and then black plays here so now if you look at this position this stone position is similar to this right so basically white set up a, a little mini Chinese right here and so you do not want to jump in right because you are jumping into a strong formation by white here it's like jumping in here for white so black jumping in here I'm not so sure what I should have would have done was probably split here so basically the, the idea behind this move is if white play this right the next big move for white would be the center move here so now you just take that first and split white up into two and if white approach here we can play here if white approach here we can play here so um, eye shape is pretty good for black so I would play here but uh, you know here is not bad either uh, it's an invasion it's just Chinese opening is for you to develop your stuff like black is trying to play fast and develop a moyo right so you shouldn't attack white right away you should develop yours so I mean even here I would play something like this now you have a double enclosed corner double uh, side this is fairly strong shape you you anytime you can get a double 
extension like this from one from a three four, you you should try to grab it. But here, uh, you see here, uh, white play correctly. White kicks black right away, takes profit, and then now um, black is still floating here. Like this group, now white is connected, and this group is floating. Right? That's the idea of the Chinese opening, that black should be Im implementing, but black is not. Instead, white is doing that. So white jumps in, and then white kicks, takes points, and who gains here? White gains lots of points in the corner, lots on the side, and then black is just like a full floating group. So not a best ideal situation for black, see? And then now black stops and approach here, which maybe in hindsight, the result is not good there. Maybe you just leave that here and approach here right away. So again, um, I think a misunderstanding of the opening um, for JDAT, like the Chinese opening. So the idea of Chinese opening is to attack. And right now, black is getting attacked, which is not the ideal situation you want to be in. So here, white pins, sl uh, slides. OK, and then this trade again. This is endgame trades um, that probably shouldn't be trade. Maybe even here to attack white here. And then uh, if we do something like this, white have to run this way. And then as white run this way, we make points in this moyo over here. So this is directional play um, here. But this push in uh, trade, I mean, I, it's bad, but it's not like anything super, super bad. So I see the shoulder hit again, similar to the last game right now. Um, but this game, black is slightly behind because of the top. Like black gave too much points for white, while this group is just like screaming to be attacked here. That's a pretty bad shape um, group. Here with the shoulder hit again. This time blacks lets. white uh, trade. Okay, if you connect here, pretty much saying that uh, given up this area, there's no way you can live here after this move. And this is a really big area. And then after this trade, I think the game is over. Because white moyo is, doesn't have a lot of potential because white can always do this. And then this is like pretty much destroyed. So after this, um, easy kill for white. And again here, um, I think black doesn't have a clear goal here, okay? So you want a clear goal. So if you're going to play this shoulder hit, know that this shoulder hits will create thickness, right? This is the meaning behind this move. This move says you can crawl and make life while I make thickness in the center. And why do black want thickness in the center? To develop the center, right? So after um, we have all these exchange and we sacrifice this corner, and then we do have thickness in the center. If you play here, this is not an attack. This is an invasion, right? But if you play here, white will play here and destroy your potential in the center. So your stones are not talking together. So what I would probably do is something like this, or even shoulder hit on here, and turn try to turn this into points because your thickness is here. You gotta stay consistent, right? You sacrifice this group to build this, but if you don't use it for anything, then you sacrifice this group for nothing, basically. So make sure you have a purpose right and you stick with that purpose it's like coming in with a game plan and then after a few moves you just forget about the game plan and you're 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 just playing around but you don't have a like a, a clear goal what you're trying to do 
So here, black jumps in. Again, um, you're not, because of this dead group here, this move doesn't do anything. It's kind of small right now. You're trying to come in, and then now white makes black crawl. Not sure why he did that instead of connecting. I guess afraid of this co. Um, yeah, I guess connect afraid of the co. Um, let's see if there is a better way to solve this. No, I guess that's. But this is pretty bad too. So, but here, this cut is not so bad because again, this is dead and white is alive here. Black is just adding stone to a wall that's now not doing anything because of this wall, right? So black successfully, a quote unquote successfully invaded white area and lived here, but at what price, right? You sacrifice like 30 points here, and this wall is supposed to yield about 30 points, but now after this move, this wall is essentially worthless because of this wall here. So the two walls count each other and it's pretty much worthless. And so now let's do an abort analysis, okay? So where is white territory? White has all the way here, all this, and all this. Black has what? Black has all this. The corner is still open, so you can't count that as territory. Remember, the corner is still open. And then uh, after white play this, this territory is not going to be that big, so... I would say black is behind by like 15 points by now. And because of this mistake attack here, and then uh, turning this wall into hmm, nothing, pretty much uh, this wall doesn't do anything. Now it's just a weak group running around. So the issue, the main issue I see in this game and the last game is a cohesive idea with the opening, right? So let's say J that decided J that wants to play uh, a Chinese opening. Well, you gotta first know that Chinese opening is used for attack to build moyo and points and thickness. So you gotta be the dude, the one doing the attacking. And then uh, you shouldn't do invasion like this move because even though you kind of invaded and reduced a little bit, you give white really solid points and then now you're a string of stone and then this is going to be hard to live also black pretty much i mean if if white plays something like this it's going to be tough for this group to live i'm not saying it's dead but i'm saying it's pretty tough for black to navigate and run this group so uh let's go to the, another game so now you kind of see a theme developing for uh, the errors of Jade That's uh, game, right? So let's go a little bit faster now. Uh, Jade That's still black. And again, we have a... Well, that's strange, okay? The Chinese opening is supposed to be here. Closer to the 3-4. You play this because it's the same distance as this, right? Uh, but this though, I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just uh, now it's hard to attack white when white jumps in. So white has space to settle here. And once again, uh, you do not want to play the second line here. This move, this move is not big anymore because the white group is settled, the black group is settled. This is an end game move. So definitely, you can play a lot of other bigger moves a lot of bigger moves everywhere still than this move okay but as you can see here um, black's not adding a lot of pressure to white at all and after this white group is super strong black is also super strong which is okay and then black played this which is pretty defensive but it's, I can't say it's bad, it's just black. Because white has Comey, which is 7.5, that's a lot. And black can't afford to play 
this defensively or else white will win the game pretty easily so you gotta as black you gotta attack a little bit and here uh, that's strange why did white play that instead of something like this or even something like this this is strange but it's okay uh, so now black has a lot of points here solid cash solid cash um, I still like white's position though because this group came in and got a lot of points from here kind of cancel this group out and then the two corners and then this so development's favoring white right now because black is finished developing there's no more potential for black to develop again another slow move so weird two move that's super slow right here black has a lot of option three 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 approach approach this is not so big anymore because this corner settled this is corner, and the center is not that big right now because there's two corner approaches two corner invasion left again a white play another small move so three small move in a row by white so at this point white is falling behind because the corner after trading these two moves the corner is super solid rock solid cannot be invaded this is all solid points right here this is all solid points and then let white can uh, black can attack on the 3-3 on both corners approach uh, I guess um, Jthat doesn't know the sequence but after being getting so solid this invasion does not work anymore because of this I mean you can cut here but it, this is solid and this doesn't have room to to live like so so you can try something like this but it's not gonna won't be happening see not enough room I mean you can poke out all you want but it's just not gonna work Or maybe here. Yeah, here's better. So if you poke something like this. It's a little, a little rough to read. maybe a call doesn't matter though because uh, solid point solid points and now this group is running but I think there could be better moves here maybe maybe here Yeah, I think this might work too. The point is, uh, black let white invade too easily here. This is so passive, and then white just connect at the bottom. Um, but it's still okay, the corner is still fairly huge. This is strange. When you have a two stone hide, the basic move is the three space jump. If you have a one stone, then you can do a two space jump, right? But this here, you're going to leave an, an opening later because black can slide in. I mean, white can slide in. So it's shape-wise, this should be this. And here, I think um, pretty even game. Uh, depend on how the corner situation here settle out but black has a lot of points here and a lot of points here not a bad position it just till here I would say um, here would be a glaring mistake by black here to play high poke 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 
Hope. This is okay. Um, this settles the black group, and then now white still has to run. I would play here first. Something around here to settle this black group and then attack white. But you definitely don't want to attack while you're weak because white can pin this stone. And now white is settled. You don't want that. You want to be able to keep attacking white while you stay strong. So you definitely want to pull here like this. So after this attack, see, see after this clamp, uh, Black is actually playing pretty aggressive. Uh, it's gonna be hard to kill this group. And then after that, it's impossible, right? Now white is connected. Still okay, position-wise. Still winnable. Okay. When you play this line, you expect white to protect the corner right if white doesn't protect the corner and white does something like this then you gotta take the corner that's the meaning of this move if you don't follow up this move doesn't mean a lot so you gotta follow up even if white does something like this on the inside it's okay this corner is alive after you play this move and then now you can play this move right the corner is big you gotta take the corner here uh black went for an attack I think black should play something like this. And I don't think white can still... I don't think white can live still. Right? Okay, here. Oh no, white can live like that. Let's see. If we play this, does that live? See, that's dead, like that. But you need this move because now black is connected and then you can attack. Uh, this poke is premature and then after this, this is pretty severe because this move is not sente, and then here you can see the pattern run now actually. So now these are dead, and so this is a bad situation. So this is where black just lost the game. It's pretty much game over here after this. So you gotta be careful when you attack. First you gotta make yourself strong. So you're taking liberties away from yourself with that this exchange and you make the white push here sente right and then so the the left group just die by itself so what you should do here is protect yourself first since white is blocked in and then now make now if white does that that's it's connected you can't you can't cut it's black right so now white has to try to live and now you can attack, right? Or even not attack, but just something like this. Just take the corner. It's pretty large. It's okay to let your opponent live. So um, that's it for game three. Let's see what's in store for game four. So glaring, uh, some glaring mistake here on directional play. It's uh, inconsistent, I would say. Like the... The moves are not cohesive. So if you watch a lot of my games um, in the Road to Four Dawn series, that game, those game, I always have. I open with a certain opening, and I keep the theme of my opening strong. And I, you try to make your moves stronger as you keep playing the game. So some some move you play like, let's say you play on the tenth move, you play a certain move. 
but on the 20th move that plays might come back and become a super stronger move because it might be a crucial move to a fight or something like that that's what you want you don't want to just play the stone and the stone it's it you play the stone and then the next stone will need to amplify the last stone or the 10 stone ago something like that so um i think we're gonna go over one more game and we're gonna stop the stream here um this is the fourth game and i think a pattern's gonna start emerging for uh, Jay that uh, this person can fix in the game. So we see a Chinese open, a correct one this time. Last time you remember, uh, Jay that played here, which is weird and odd. And this time we see White falling for it and going in right away. And then back plays Kosumi to protect the corner and attack and gain points and then white does this with the pincer on the other side so white is making a double mistake here C jumping in making two weak groups and then black is attacking to make another strong weak group okay and then now uh, white attaches to curate something here I don't agree with this attack by black because black kind of made a weak group and then let white settle really gr well here. I would say play here. Like so. Um, if white does something like this then you can keep pushing. At least this way black is making eyes and is alive and white is not alive yet. Even something like this. See you're still keeping the two groups separated and this one is not solid alive unlike the other pattern um, at the top maybe I want to see this uh, this drop down at least and attack this see it with this drop down now you can still attack this later and this is not quite alive yet and then now you can do something like this right so you want to force white to run into your strong group here and attack and create points on this side in the moyo. That's correct directional of play here. Um, this push is not great. I don't like it. But here though, um, I think black should have played here. And then you can have uh, something like this so uh, at least now this group is all connected black group is all connected into one place this thing is not alive yet this is alive but it's sealed in which position wise is okay for me this I don't like so much because uh, there's always this cut here you see how it can't be Atari because of that Atari? So the white, black's group is not super strong here. The sly is bad for white because now it lets black poke in here. And then now this looks, this looks okay now because um, the influence is so great for white that this tray and this tray looks okay now with that push. Shouldn't have let that happen. White shouldn't have. Um, that's not as big as this. That's Sente. You gotta do that first and block black in. And this move's not that big anymore because this wall is all alive. This is alive. This is a tiny move now. I would say play something like here. Or you want to emphasize the outside, then play something like here and develop this area up. This wall is so nice and thick now. This is a small move, and uh, that's too large for let white to poke out like this. This wall is not as effective anymore because of that move. So you see here, um, again, directional play is getting black in trouble here. You gotta stay consistent with what your goal is. So if you're playing for influence outside these stones, then you gotta keep black in. You gotta seal. I mean, you gotta seal white in. And this is a tiny move. You gotta 
to get stronger, we got to avoid tiny moves like this at the beginning. This is still opening. Lots of corner open left. 3-3 three, three still open left. You should not be playing. Be wary playing second lines so early on, okay? Because they're tiny. So if you just slow down a little bit and do some board analysis, you would want to play there, here. Because that's the sensei. White has to connect and live first. Then you can play somewhere else outside. That's a better um, better result using this wall. So this wall is very powerful. Hard for white to come in here. But after this mistake here, the small capture, white pokes here, and then this wall is not as effective. This is a tiny move. This corner is alive. Um, so you extend from the corner and get like 9 points. Right now, there's a lot bigger moves. Other places that are worth more than 9 points. Strange attack here, fixing white shape. So thanks to this exchange, this A for B exchange, that helped uh, black actually. Because now, this cut doesn't work anymore. You see that? It doesn't work anymore because of the ladder. So this exchange was bad because it helped black. If you can cut here, this cut still worked because of the Atari, but now you poke here and you fix the, this Atari and now the cut doesn't work. So that helped black. But this is a good move here by white. After this, white is leading by quite a bit because this wall is pretty much neutralized because uh, these stones are so effective. Look in here, it's going to come back and prevent black from creating a lot of points in this area. Uh, after this, not so bad actually. This trade here... Um, not that great for for white because white should have played here and uh, push out to the center here but playing here is very passive and after all this trade okay you never want Ponoki is good but you never want to make your own Ponoki without capturing any stone it's very inefficient and it usually is worth a lot, 45 points they say but this one's like isolated next to the corner it's not worth that much and black now is like super strong outside this is a bad trade for white actually so now white black is back in the game <laughs> and let's see here poke through okay good Okay, so here, um, black captured a lot of points here. And then, so at this point, I think black is leading now because white hasn't done anything because of this bad exchange here and then this bad exchange here. Like, this thickness is not going to do anything because black is so thick here. So now it's neutralizing this inefficiency of this wall because now white is building in another wall that's also inefficient. So, and then black got points here. So now black is like back in the game. Okay, so far so good. Okay. Um, important directional play here, okay? You gotta be able to do some board analysis. So white has a group here, very weak group, and then another group here, which is also somewhat weak, right? So what is the best move here for white or for black? Whose turn? Black is black's turn, right? Black plays. Okay, black plays here, but really black should play 
here. Why here? Because it separates this group and this group. And it also cuts this two groups away from this group. And then now you can attack in the center, right? Or you can even play here and emphasize this attack here. But And this group is still cut off. So this is a forking attack, they call it in chess. This double attack on two sides. And white is fair I mean black is fairly strong everywhere. This position favors black for sure. I think black here, if I was black, I would win the game pretty easy. Here. So um there are some mistakes that J that is making, but uh I think mid game is not so bad and um, I guess at this level, you can afford to make a uh, certain mistake like this, and then you can still come back and win. This splitting attack is uh, a little, I don't know, um, it's not a bad move, but there are better moves on board. And then so, white keeps wanting to develop these stones, and I guess attack this black group, but this black group is very strong. There's no way you can attack it. Again, um, not end game yet. I know it looks scary, but your group is so safe that a move like this will lose you the game because it's on the first line, it doesn't do much. And then after white takes that, that's huge. This is a huge point. And if you play this, now this stone's under attack and white is not getting points right here. You see the difference? So what if uh, white does something like that? It's not like he can do anything. He can do that, but here still black is alive. So that move is small and you should have played something like this. So watch out. I guess the biggest theme that I've seen in the five games, watch out for small moves. Don't play small moves. If it's, your move is on the second line or the first line, be careful if the game is still open like this. Okay, so this is a lot bigger than this move over here. I hope you can see that. And then so now that this white not only protect this stone connected to their living group, got points here. I would do this because this is the end game. Um, end game is a little bit harder to learn. I don't want to focus on it with these reviews. But the reason why you don't want to do this, do this, is because now white does this is sente, and then black, white has sente, right? Sente is very important. So if you're gonna leave sente, then you do this now. That's not sente. If white does that, you can play somewhere else. Come in here and reduce this center a little bit you know or even poke through here but uh, again don't play first line it's not end game yet so don't play first line notice how white is getting all the sente and now the center is getting pretty big and scary so anyway I think that was a lot uh, for this stream to for you guys to process. It's just, I hope you guys uh, learn a little bit about the concept of opening. Like, I think if you can grasp the concept of opening, you can get fairly strong, fairly fast. It's just try to stay consistent with your moves. Don't play Chinese opening, but then uh, jump in and invade other people's territory. That's not what the Chinese opening is all about. Chinese opening is you make the territory and you force your opponent to come in and invade your area, right? So stay consistent. So if you want to be the one doing the invasion, play 4-4. Uh, and then you can play light and then attack. So basically, uh, this is the first four game uh, of JThat. And then I'm going to hit it up with another session later on. But uh, hopefully after a while, there's going to be a theme that develops here. So far, I'm seeing the opening looks OK. Um, Mid-game looks pretty good. And then fighting strategy, 
looks okay. Rating looks okay at this level. Uh, the only thing is um, playing small moves like these and letting white plays big moves like that you know what I mean um, you don't want to play and trading like these moves you don't want to do yet because you might need those later for codes you don't want to waste your codes threat okay so I hope uh, you guys learn something and I really hope that JThat will learn a lot from this and if you can improve one two stones uh, that'll be all worth it anyway I'll end this stream here and then I'll hit you guys up um, I guess sometime tomorrow, even later tonight, on some more reviews or maybe games. Uh, if you like this type of uh, the new series, and give it a thumbs up. If you have any uh, ideas on how to make it better for the uh, 15Q to 5Q area, uh, leave it a comment, and then I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace out.